I cultivate happiness with a lot of work, basically. It's um, something that I work on and I try for and I have a million techniques. It's a lot about time management and making sure that I have time for everything that I want to do in my day. This is something that my teacher really stresses and she has her days mapped out. Two hours for her practice, an hour she walks with her husband in the morning so that that's taken care of and three hours for eating throughout the day. And she's the first to say that um, when you're older you have more time on your hands. So I'm a little bit more all over the place trying to keep this place running. But um, it's something that I have to engage with all the time. If, if two weeks have passed and I haven't gotten to go to the beach, I'm, I'm miserable and I feel awful for myself and I'm like a sad sack. So I have to get to the beach. I have to have the time for that. Likewise, if it's been a, more than three days and I haven't gotten to practice, um, I'm, I'm full of resentment and I'm awful. So I just have learned kind of very like actively, very practically what I have to do to, um, to feel like I'm getting what I want, to feel like I'm working hard and I'm, and I'm also get to do everything that I want to do. So manicure every two weeks, stuff like that, very silly stuff like that. Can sadness coexist with happiness? Absolutely. They're, they're two sides of the same coin. At this point, when I'm having an upswing and I, I feel, you know, joy rising up and I'm getting exciting, I'm almost like, uh, you know, be careful because it comes down. And so, you know, I think you can be sad about something specific, but still be happy overall. Like you can still remember your blessings. The easiest way for me to get happy is just to remind myself, I just use, it's like a mantra um, that I'm the luckiest girl in the whole world. And, and I believe that. And, um, you know, I think everybody is lucky if, if we're alive and get to do what we want to do, then when I'm getting down or feeling like, um, you know, <laughs> then I'm like, just have to remind myself that and um, count my blessings, basically. So in terms of like outside influences, but then, you know, we all know that happiness comes from within. There's definitely a relationship. Uh, an idea that my teacher has kind of been drilling into us is that you want to hold the center as you navigate your circumstances, your circumference, the world around you. And so, you know, the more centered you can become, the better perspective you have on your circumstances. The more you can see what's happening around you, not get blindsided, not miss it, you know, and step into the life you want. And she's all about developing techniques, like honing your vision, this is what I want, this is who I want to be, and then thinking about what techniques are going to get you there. Something she says is um, yoga isn't about being nice, it's about becoming powerful, but being nice makes you more powerful. And I'm obsessed with that. And I think it makes me think, you know, want to be a successful studio owner? Better be nice. And um, it's like being sneaky and using the techniques you, you have, you can observe, you can cultivate to get what you want. So I definitely think you have to set the conditions for happiness. If you're running ragged, getting paid nothing, working hard, not getting what you think you deserve, not sleeping enough, eating like shit, it's a lot harder to step into and to embody that naturally joyous state. If you, um, you know, get to go to the beach or do whatever it is you like and you get to, you know, cook your own food, that, that's so important to me. If I don't get to cook for, you know, a week and a half, I'm like, I'm going to the market, I'm getting all the ingredients and I'm cooking a nice meal. So, you know, that's not for everyone, just whatever it is for you, very simple like that. And then I'm like, yes, 
I got to cook, I get to do what I want, and now tomorrow I go back to work. And so, um, absolutely, you need to set the scene. You need to make your space beautiful that you live in, you know, whatever that means to you. You need to be able to engage in the things you want to do. You need to be getting back stuff for the work you do. Otherwise, uh, you feel depleted, you feel depressed, you feel taken advantage of. So, um, yes, definitely set the stage, create the conditions, and just be very honest with yourself about what it is. For some people, it's a nightly ritual that looks like this. For some people, it's getting a manicure. For some people, it's making sure they get to go to the beach. For some people, I don't know, a ski trip once a year. I, I, I don't know what it is, but you figure it out for yourself. Just practicing and making it a habit to say that you're happy and say that you're lucky and say that you're blessed and appreciate the small things and really just carving out the time and space to get to do what you want to do you know and we're all working very hard and work is amazing and if you're lucky enough to do something that you love then you know it's just more blessings that you get to count and you know you just have to remind yourself every day every hour that you're lucky that you're blessed that um you know it's a miracle like i feel so fortunate to get to teach yoga to have my own studio to have my friends and family to you know get to play with my plants and cook my own food and be with my dog that um it's like just those simple things and and i'm filled up and good to go pour it out towards the students <laughs>